Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. My name is Pastor Johnston Sakwa, coming to you live on the Scripture Prescription this amazing but wonderful morning. What a privilege to have the opportunity to share the Word of God with us. And I believe that the Lord is going to minister to us as he has done many times. And so I'm excited. I am privileged. I feel humbled and honored to have the opportunity to speak into your lives by the grace of God. I want to pray and then we'll hear the message from the Father. Our Father, we thank you this morning. And we thank you because you alone can touch our lives. You alone can change us. You alone can lift us. And you alone can be a blessing to us. For this reason, Father, I lift you and I honor you, my God. And I pray that in Jesus' name, you'll minister to us greatly by the grace of God. I thank you, Father, for everything that we are going through. Thank you, Father, for every situation. Sometimes we feel, my Father, we are pressed from every side. But I thank you because there is hope and there is a way for each one of us. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen and amen. Good morning. This morning, I'd like to speak about a subject I have titled, Deal with the heart. Deal with the heart. The ways we deal with our hearts determine to what extent we can receive certain openings of blessing in our lives. We have to make it our desire and our intention not to carry things in our hearts. I read the Bible in the book of Proverbs chapter number 4 and verse number 23. Let me start from verse number 20, but I want to put emphasis on verse number 23. My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. For they are to life for those who find them and health to all their flesh. Keep your heart with all diligence. Keep your heart with all diligence for out of it spring the issues of life. Keep your heart with all diligence because out of it spring out the issues of life. Let's read it from the message translation. It says, keep vigilant watch. Keep vigilant watch over your heart. That's where life starts. That is from the message translation of the Bible. Keep vigilant watch over your heart. That's where life starts. Now, ladies and gentlemen, Relationships have been broken because of the condition of the hearts of people. There are people who have, come, have gotten into ailments and sicknesses because of the condition of their hearts. There are many nations which are troubled. There are many relationships. There are people who have lost, you know, relationships with their, their employers because of the issues of the heart. Remember, the Bible tells us, guard your heart with all diligence because out of it springs the issues of life. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, I come to present to you this morning that you need to understand that if you were to deal with the condition of your heart, you'd have an easy life to live. You'll not have a lot of struggle. You'll not have a lot of pain. You'll not be troubled many times because you have learned to insulate your heart against things that are, necess and are unnecessary in your life. You've got to understand that you are uniquely placed in the place you find yourself in. You are uniquely called. You've got unique attributes that God has given to you to give you enablement to become the unique nature of what God desires and intends over your life. There's a uniqueness about you that cannot be compared to anybody else. You know, sometimes we feel like, you know, the grass is greener outside there. But yet we lose sight of the green grass that surrounds us. You are a valuable individual before God. God has expressly said you are peculiar in his presence. You are a peculiar individual. You have been created in God's will. 
You've been created in God's desire. You've been created in God's plan. God has got a specific desire to fulfill his purposes over your life. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, I want to tell you this morning and submit before you that you are an original, but you have to insulate your heart against issues that can drag you behind. Now, I want you to know, and I heard a preacher say yesterday, that when the, the, and in fact, somebody told me one early morning, it's only a tree that has got ripe fruits that is hit with stones in an endeavor to cause the fruits to drop. Praise the Lord. Now, when issues are brought against your life, whether malicious or that are correct, you have to understand that when the enemy looks at the value in your life, he's going to be fighting that destiny. I've said this before and I present it to us again. If the enemy understands your purpose, if he understands your, the, the grace that is upon your life, understands the gifting that is around your life, the devil is going to spend the midnight oil trying to fight you to stop you from arriving and reaching your purpose. It is for this reason that I've taken time to write a book known as Destiny Leaks because I know and I understand that the devil's intention is to try to destroy, that is kill you from getting your destiny or try to delay it or just divert it. The devil has set up traps and ways and means to try to remove you from your purpose if he cannot destroy you or delay you from your purpose if he can distract you. That is how the devil, the devil works. This morning, I want to tell you, if we deal with the issues of our heart and let people go, and sometimes the people that are held in the hearts of people have absolutely nothing to do with what those people are thinking about. Some people are troubled in their hearts because of the progression of other people. Some people are troubled in their hearts because of success of other people. Some people have a problem in their hearts because of what God is doing around people. That is something that we ought to know, understand, and appreciate. Dealing with the heart. Guard your heart with all diligence because out of it springs the issues of life. The message translation has just killed it. It said, keep vigilant over your heart. That's where life starts. Now, if you do not take care of the issues of your life, it is then true that your life then will not begin. And when I talk about life beginning, I mean your true value, what God wants you to be, God's intention, God's desire, God's purpose, God's intention for your life is what I'm talking about. Dealing with the heart. There are brothers fighting against brother, sister fighting against sister. Mother fighting against child, child fighting against father, you know, an employee fighting against their supervisor, employee against employee, business person against business person. A lot of these relationships are have a problem because of the issues of the heart. Spouse against spouse, all these things are happening today. We hear funny things happening in society today. We hear terrible things happening in society today. But where? Did this thing come from? It is from the condition and the state of the heart. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, I want you to know that it must be your own determination, your own desire, your own decision that you will deal with the issues of the heart. I don't know how else to put it, but I want to tell you, if your heart is cleansed, if your heart is pure, if your heart is clean, it will unlock great doors and avenues of God's influence upon your life. And now I want to tell you, you must turn your perspective and have a heart that is willing and determined to bless. Praise the Lord. A heart that is willing and determined to bless. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, every time we look at the purposes of God, when you look at people who are used of God, their perspective of their heart was bigger than for their selfish ambition, desire, or intention. If you look at Moses, if you look at Abraham, 
All these people that God was able to use magnanimously in a special and big way, those people, their hearts were about the people. Their hearts were about the people. They desired that God would rescue, the Lord would lift, and the Lord would bless. Praise the Lord. And so as you focus, as you look at your life, redeeming time, we don't have all the time that we need. We don't have all the time that we desire. I only want to tell you that it would take a man and woman of God to understand the capacity under which God wants you to live. And our capacity sometimes is limited by the condition of our hearts. Let me ask you, when you go to events where there is success on other people, either their children are doing a wedding or they have bought a new car or they have built a house or they have gotten a promotion or they have gotten an increase in salary and maybe you haven't gotten yourself or you haven't done these things yourself, how does your heart feel? How does your heart feel? Somebody has got opportunity to go abroad. Somebody is having connections to visit places here and there. Um, God is using somebody in ministry, um, you know, in a special way. Uh, God is blessing somebody tremendously. They have been endowed. You see, they are blessed. They are, literally have finances. Resources have been released to their way. What happens to the state of your heart? Now, if you feel pain in your heart, then you need help from God. If you feel that something is, you feel instead of celebrating somebody's success and victory, your heart feels pain, you need help. You need God to help you. Because if you cannot celebrate success of others, then your success will be difficult to come. If somebody has been blessed, if somebody God is lifting, if somebody God is changing their lives, God is manifesting his power in their lives, and you're seeing the evidence of great things happening in their lives, you need not have a bad attitude, a bad condition of the heart against them. You cannot carry somebody in your heart simply because they have made progress. You cannot even be tempted to imagine Negative things against people simply because they are blessed. It's the wrong thing. Now I'm telling you, watch your heart because that's where life starts. You can only attract your like. Praise the Lord. If you are happy about people's success and victory, then you will attract the same in full measure. That is the difference. And I'm talking this morning about dealing with the heart. Deal with the heart. Praise the name of the Lord. Deal with the heart. Now, you will not go to a lesson to understand or you go to a class on how to deal with the heart. I've given you an example. When great things happen in the lives of people out there and you have gotten knowledge of it, how does your heart feel? How does your heart feel? What do you feel? What, what goes through your heart? Do you feel that you're blessed or that individual is blessed and you can glorify God for them? Or what do you feel? What do you feel? Praise the name of the Lord. What do you feel? Some people when they see something, something cut through their heart, they are just wondering how would this happen? How would this happen to this person? Sometimes it is sad that even people have a problem to see a certain ministry building a church, magnificent one, um, having wonderful team of praise and worship. It's amazing sometimes that there is even a struggle in people who minister because when somebody has done something, possibly they have sung so well and people have been blessed, the glory of the Lord has come down what do you feel as a praise and worship member? What do you feel in your heart? When somebody else is getting hold of the mic, 
they have lifted up their voice to worship the Lord and the presence came down. And you are not the one who is doing the leading. Maybe you're just backing up or maybe you're in the congregation. What goes through your heart? Praise the name of the Lord. What goes through your heart? I'm here to discuss with us a matter of dealing with the heart. Dealing with the heart. Because out of the heart spring out the issues of life. You must be very careful. Now, if you are not blessed by what people are doing, if you are not blessed by the success and prowess of other people, let me tell you, it will be very difficult for you to succeed. Very, very difficult. And I present to you this word from the bottom of my heart because I know what it takes for us to get into our place. Now, I want you to know that temporary success does not mean that it will be perpetual. All right? So, even if you find yourself to be doing better and you underrate other people by virtue of the condition of your heart, your success, your current success could be temporal. And I'm asking God to deal with issues of my life. Now, even as I come to a close, there are two dimensions I want us to look at. There are things you'll have to make your mind to stop doing physically. Those are external. For instance, you have been going to a particular place and when you come out of the place, you feel your spiritual power has been lost you must make a decision and say, I will not go there anymore. Praise the Lord. I will not go there anymore. That's a decision and a choice you make. It is external. You decide and you say, I'm not going to do this thing anymore. Maybe you've been engaging yourself in activities that are sinful. And you need help. Now, if you try to stop something and... Is not possible. You are struggling. You need further spiritual help so you can come out of it. But there are those things you can say by the help of God, I'm not going to do this thing anymore. I'm not going to go to this place anymore. And you decide and you stop. Those are external and you can deal with them. But the matter of the heart is internal. And I'm talking about the heart today. Maybe in the future I talk about the mind, but I'm talking today about the heart. The renewal of your mind, but I will talk this morning and I'm talking about the heart. It is internal. These are issues you decide are all the, all, the, all the same, but they are internal in nature. And you have to move forward in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Deal with the heart. Deal with the heart. Brethren, deal with the heart. Hallelujah. Deal with the heart. I charge you in the name of Jesus. I charge you, beloved, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, that you will deal with the issues of the heart. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You will deal with the issues of the heart. Praise the name of our Lord. May the good Lord help you. The good Lord open your understanding that when you appreciate your role and responsibility of dealing with the matters of your heart, I can guarantee you without any doubt that great things will happen in your life. Praise the Lord. Great things will happen in your life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Father, we thank you this morning. Why do we thank you, Father? Because of teaching us how to deal with our hearts. Jehovah God, Elohim, I pray that my Father, you continue to minister to us. Help us to crush every speckle of things that we are holding in our hearts that shouldn't be there. Help us to protect what gets into our hearts. And we will not just speak we will not just do things, but we shall carefully interrogate the impact of the things we do and what we allow in our hearts. 
I thank you, Father, and I bless you this particular day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. The good Lord bless you. The good Lord be with you. This has been your host and your servant, Pastor Johnston Sakwa, coming to you live on the Scripture Prescription, your daily morning dose of the word of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. God bless you. I ask you, please turn on your notification button on this program, on this page, the Scripture Prescription, or you can go to my Facebook page, Johnston Sakwa, just put and click notification so that every time we share the Word of God, you will receive a notification and your life will be blessed. We are also on YouTube, Johnston Sakwa 1.0. You can get there and the Lord will continue to bless your life. God bless you. I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow morning by the grace of God. Amen and amen.